Harbour porpoises are a focus of my research because they're pretty much the only animal we have in the North Sea and in the Baltic Sea. And it is a very understudied animal. The interest came about when we realized they are much wider distributed than previously thought and that human activities could have an impact on harbour porpoise. Our research is looking particularly at the impact of offshore wind farms on the harbour porpoise. If you can only generate renewable energy by losing a lot of bird life or marine mammal life, then you could doubt whether or not it's renewable energy. So the value of that research is in learning how to apply this technology in a marine environment without doing um, harm to the environment. There are several things that are perceived as negative for offshore wind farms. People are concerned about it being a collision maybe. It, it takes away space from wildlife. And then obviously the construction is introducing sound to the environment and what does that sound do to different animals. Most of the time construction of a wind farm will take place with pile driving and that just takes some time and it's an impulsive noise. It's a noise that spreads far and that's extremely loud. Harbour porpoises are small cetaceans, so they are actually highly dependent on noise. When they hunt, they use a sonar, which is like an echolocation. So you're sending out noise and you need to hear the reflection to know where your food is, how to navigate and also to communicate. So if you impact their ability to hear, that is a huge impact for this species. The study shown that the influence of piling operations definitely is there and that's why we're still working on developing technologies in reducing the noise level of pile driving. But in the operations phase, it's really no issue. I think the study has shown that. We can look at area surveys or boat surveys and we can see how does the distribution of animals change when you have this noise generated. And there are some indications that they leave the area for up to 20, 30 kilometers distance. So that's quite significant. We also place underwater microphones and we can listen to the sounds of the porpoises and we can see when these sounds change, when they stop clicking. And that also indicates that probably about 20 kilometers distance, animals change their click behavior, so probably they move out. Egmond aan Zee is a small village at the Dutch coast and the wind farm is 12 kilometers off the coast. It's a wind farm of 36 turbines of uh, 3 megawatt each. In Egmond and Zee, we could see that based on these acoustic detectors we had in the park and outside the park, that there were more animals in the park after the construction had finished and the operational phase was going on. A lot of people considered it to be quite surprising that there was hardly any influence in the operational phase, but I think that's the good news. If you are capable of mitigating the effects of construction, then you're there. Once it's operating, a wind farm is fairly calm compared to the outside, especially in the Southern North Sea. We have a lot of large shipping routes and there's a lot of shipping and fishing going on. So in a way you could imagine that it's actually quite quiet, you know, it's even been called an oasis. The other thing that would impact this oasis feeling maybe is that there are potentially more fish. The seafloor, because it was no, no longer touched by trawling, and I was told that every square meter is touched by trawling every one and a half year, by simply cutting that off, that process off, that it would uh, recover. We definitely know there's more fish diversity, and that has to do with these piles, pylons, and especially the scouring at the bottom. So you have large boulders and, and stones that are at the bottom of each pile. Those attract benthic organisms, and those attract fish. So you have almost an artificial reef that would potentially attract porpoises. I mean, if there's fish, they're very food driven, they would probably go there. And also there's the whole socioeconomic context of fishermen. If they're not allowed to fish in wind farms, where are they allowed to fish? And one issue that is a bit concerning right now is there is a lot of talk about multi-use of wind farms. I'm a fisherman, it's in my blood. That means I'm a hunter. And uh, at a certain moment, we knew that wind farms will be constructed on our fishing grounds. That's a fact, and you have to deal with it. But I think there's a lot of future in the combination of fishing and breeding species and become a, 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 a farmer at sea. The question, I think, comes down to, are you capable of developing fishing technologies that are safe for the people on board 
and are safe for the people in the wind farm and, and the hardware of the wind farm. Because the fishing, the, the, the trawler has quite some influence on the seafloor on an e ecological level, but it also has a potential risk on the cabling of the wind farm. We have ideas about a new and innovating coastal fishing vessel, small scale vessel, and we have ideas about the propulsion system with the use of hybrid techniques as well as uh, sail power. So we are cooperating with scientific organizations and companies or institutions who want to look at multi-use of wind farms. We have these theories that these wind pylons and the scouring around them will serve as a new habitat, like a reef habitat. So we need to investigate that. And something like this, there's a succession of species that will start growing and fish that will come and then new fish will come. That doesn't happen in a year. So for Ahmed Anze and actually for any kind of wind farm, I would really wish that we would be more consistent in how we do this research, that we really look before we are building it, during construction and afterwards, and that we actually conduct some long-term studies. We think that there's a lot of potential for offshore wind on the North Sea, but that might run to monitoring questions. So we consider it relevant that the Dutch government takes a role there as well, in order to make sure that we can combine the, if you like, the ecological targets and ambitions that the EU and the Netherlands has with the renewable targets that are there as well, and do not automatically by itself go together well. So there's quite a way to go because the Netherlands committed itself as well to the EU targets of 14% in 2020. Yes, the building of wind farms has an impact, obviously, hopefully short term. And yes, we need to check what kind of impact that is and we need to mitigate any negative effects. But we also should remember that the reason we want wind farms is because we're looking at ways to reduce the carbon emissions. Climate change has a huge impact on marine mammals. And although porpoises are quite flexible, so they could probably move away in different areas, other species are not. So I think when we have this discussion, it is important also to remember that wind farms are actually important to go towards a longer term healthy ecosystem and changing hopefully climate change if we, if we can 